Utcám kalla, long time listener. Hey Tom, how you doing? Doing okay, how you doing? Hey, uh, don't worry, I'm not from the East Coast. What are you anyway? What are you, an Arab? What are you, Hawaiian? What are you? Everything you say is pretty much spot on, and I'm not one of those jerky women that think you suck. I actually think you rock. How do you give her a hit? Well, here's what you do. You change. The, you, ever, you ever change the ringtone in your girl's phone? You change it to this. <laughs> now, if every, every time her phone rang, that song came on, she'd get the hint. I already prepared my girlfriend for Valentine's Day. I met her a year and a half ago, and I told her Valentine's Day don't exist. <laughs> it don't exist in my vocabulary. It's not a holiday for me. It's a holiday for you. So if you want somebody, go get them. Look how thin she is. Wow. Love that. So that's what you like. Yes. Yes, I do. You like the little skinny thing. Yes. Other than me, I would rather eat a gun than watch a female comic. <laughs> They stink. Remember this saying, three words, vag ain't funny, okay? Just look hot, bang me, and get the hell out. If I'm a guy, that's what I want. Am I right, Tom? Exactly. And that's what we have happening these days now. You know, we have uh, society deciding on all kinds of stuff that, you know, I don't want to see it. I don't my kids see it. I don't want you seeing it. It's nobody's business what I see or if I have a kid what my kids see. Not, not your business. A new vagina is like a new car. When you first get into it, you want to just put the premium, you want to take care of it, you detail it every single week, you don't let your friends put your feet up on the dashboard, and six months later, you look in the back, and there's an old In-N-Out burger, you don't care if it's dirty, somebody's written wash me on it, and you're just ready to get into a new lease. She's never even paid a bill, nothing, because there's no yeah, rent. Are you listening I to me? I, I, hello? How is this thing working? Testing. One, two, hello. <laughs> Speaking of advertising, Dad, I bet you anything, if some agency puts this as a ringtone, they'll make a lot of money in the next few weeks. I'll bet they've already done it. They're, they're pretty they smart. i got to tell you, they're pretty smart. Uh, they're pretty smart. Whoever wrote that jingle is pretty smart. You know, before we close Guantanamo Bay, one great way to, uh, to get people to talk would just be to start. Five, five Those Middle Easterners to talk. Here you go. <laughs> Who needs waterboarding? From Hollywood. My sister's little beaver scout. It's the Tom Likas Show. I love little beavers. And now. And now. Here he is. Tom. Like is. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. Thank you for tuning in. On another Friday with wide open telephones, we can talk about anything you like, anything at all, anything goes here. It can be anything we discussed on the air this week, anything you think we should have talked about. You can call up, yell, scream, complain, jump up and down. It's all fair game as long as you're absolutely fascinating. If you're not, we kick your ass the hell off the telephone. It's that simple. All you've got to do is call us here at 1-800-5800-TOM. It's 1-800-5800-866. Just another wonderful 24 hours. If you've been following what's been going on, the latest, it just gets worse. Remember when Circuit City was filing for Chapter 11, but they were going to keep operating? They were going to close a few stores? (laughs) That didn't last long. Circuit City is going to begin liquidating all remaining stores. 30,000 employees laid off. 567 stores closed. And by the way, and I'm not kidding about this, if you ever want to know why you shouldn't buy the extended warranty on something, (laughs) here it is right here. It says, the fates of outstanding warranties are still to be determined. 
Good luck, folks. You know, you really got to get that warrant. Do you get three years? And you don't have to pay for the cert. Yeah. <laughs> It's only $227 in addition to the $86 cost of your vote. Okay, I'll, I'll take it. Right. See what happens to you. They also don't know what will happen to their fire dog repair service or their Canadian stores, but I think we got an idea here. <laughs> Just amazing. Also... As if that weren't enough. I mean, like, this is every day now. This is every day. Hertz is going to cut more than 4,000 jobs. That hurts. Trying a worldwide restructuring through the first quarter due to falling demand. Hertz's uh, shares on Wall Street fell nearly 9%. Hertz expects to save 150 to $170 million in 2009 from the job cuts. They will take a fourth quarter charge of 20 to $25 million for the cuts, you know, to give everybody their severance pay and everything. The cuts are in the car and equipment rental businesses as well as in corporate and support areas in all regions focused on positions that don't have direct contact with customers. Hertz will have cut its workforce by 32% since August 2006 with the latest round of reductions. So I imagine the lines will continue because there'll be less and less people working at Hertz. Fantastic. So it never stops, and a year from now, uh, you know, uh, you're going to be unemployed. Whoever you are, you're probably going to be gone. So uh, just get ready for that. Just be prepared. Brace for impact, folks. As Sully once said, as he was flying over the Hudson River, brace for impact. Jeez. So anyway, it's you, me, a telephone, and this big goddamn blowtorch. Now all you have to do is do your part. Tom like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show. Wide open telephones. Anything can happen on the Tom Likas Show every Friday at 1-800-5800-TOM. Don't forget to listen tomorrow for our Saturday show, 2 until 6 p.m. tomorrow. That's tomorrow, 2 until 6 p.m. on 97.1 FM Talk in Los Angeles. And at our website, blowmeuptom.com. If you can't hear it on the radio, you're going to find it somehow. The Tom Langer Show now six days a week. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Adam on the Tom Langer Show. Hello. Hey, how's it going, Tom? It's going great. Well, uh, let's see. You kind of uh, gave me some really bad news yesterday. <laughs> you were, uh, uh, let's just say I found out that I was getting uh, let go of uh, two places yesterday, all in one day, and, and I pretty much got some of that information from you. So, Why, well, Where were you uh, getting uh, aced? Uh, well, let's see. First, uh, one of them was, uh, let's see. I heard that, uh, what, Black Angus is going bankrupt? <laughs> yes, Black Angus, exactly. Yeah, well, let's see what happens with that, see if they end up closing some stores or something. I'm not sure what's going to go on there. And then another, it's a day job. An hour later, I uh, got the news that I'm getting the X. So two in one day. How about that? Wow, that that's outrageous. Well, two you know, jobs and you lost them both the same day. Well, you know how it is nowadays. You have a full time, then you have a part time, and now need now you need a uh, a backup for your part time. <laughs> how about that? I know. I mean, this is where it's going. This is why I'm telling everybody: pay your bills, get your debts down to zero, get them down. Don't be actually, spending. Actually, you know what? I listen to you. Uh, I listen to you uh, almost uh, every other day, and uh, believe me, if that's one that's one thing I. Uh, uh, I took that and ran with it. I hurried up and paid off my credit card bill, so I'm kind of I'm good right now. Well, that's I'm, good. So I did. I did. so yeah, but yeah, funny. Keep, keep those. <laughs> what do you know, do? Well, all you can do is laugh. Uh, keep those cards around, but don't use them except in case of emergency, and they'll be good to have in case of emergency. Exactly. All right. Well, well good, good that's luck. That's all Adam. I wanted to say. I feel your pain. This is my day every day is getting phone calls at home from people like Adam, friends of mine, 
uh, asking uh, if I know of any jobs available or if I know if they're getting canned. I mean, it's every day, every day. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. It's Ross on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Dad. How's it going? Uh, okay. Good, good. You know, I always love to hear your opinions on topics, and uh, I just had a quick one. I want to know what you think about the upcoming uh, inauguration with Obama and what you what you thought about that. You know, there's so many uh, rumors about, you know, he's going to die, you know, on Martin Luther King Day, you know, and so he's going to share the holiday, and, and then, you know, or he's going to get shot. On the on the day of, so uh, I was just kind of wondering what you thought about that. Uh, all that stuff is stupid speculation. I mean, uh, keep in mind, Martin Luther King was murdered forty one years ago, right. and uh, the assassination attempts on presidents and presidential candidates stopped being successful about twenty eight years ago with Ronald Reagan. And Ronald Reagan was not assassinated; they just, somebody got at him and shot him. Right. So I, I do think the security's gotten better, and I think they've gotten smarter at the Secret Service. And uh, I think to speculate about that is counterproductive. I mean, we need that uh, inauguration to to be a success. I think it will be the most watched presidential inauguration since they began keeping records, right. uh, especially since there were so many people out of work who can sit home and watch it. Right. Now, uh, also, like, what do you think about, like, the race? Like, do you think there's going to be more, like, race issues now, or do you think it might no, settle down? No, or? not unless you're a racist. Right. No, no, and by all means, I'm I'm not even close. I have tons of uh, African-American friends, and, and, yeah, I'm not even close, but I'm just talking about... No, I, I, like, I, make, I will make a prediction. Here is my one prediction, and that is that it won't be long before uh, people start saying that uh, Barack Obama uh, isn't what we thought he was. In other words, uh, isn't as good as we thought he would be, didn't do as much good as we thought he would. And the reason is uh, not because of any uh, failings of Barack Obama, but simply because the hype on Barack Obama has been so outrageous. And right. people have conferred such uh, uh, the feeling of him being a deity upon him that right. uh, nobody could live up to that. Nobody, right. nobody can live up to that. And you will see his approval rating, especially as they spend these trillions of dollars and spend us into deficits like, like we've never seen before. Uh, you will see his approval rating drop pretty quickly after the first few months. And again, I voted for him. I want him to do great. And frankly, I think he's going to do very, very well. Right. But I just believe that no matter how well he does, it won't be good enough. Right, yeah, and, and my only my only worry is that for some reason, if he doesn't do as good as everyone's hoping that he does, you know, then it turns out to be, you know, I think like more of a race issue. Like, okay, well now we're saying that he's that he's not doing good because more people are racist. You know, like we're saying it because he's black. You know, and and like I've heard some of my African American friends say that too. Like, if he doesn't do good. And, and we get on him about that, you know, it's like all of a sudden now we're back to the whole race thing where, you know, we're getting on him, so now we're racist. Yeah. You know, uh, well, and, uh, you know, again, uh, the, the racists will get on him for sure. They're going to say, see that? You shouldn't have voted right. for a black guy. And then uh, the Republicans are going to start saying, well, some of those are also the racists, some are not. Uh, some of those are going to start saying, uh, look at that, uh, another tax and spend liberals, socialists, communists, whatever, and now we're in worse shape than ever. Uh, because even if there is a stimulus package, even if people are hired to do government works projects, this stuff doesn't work overnight. And uh, if you look back at the Depression of 1929, the uh, stock market crash of 29, and the Depression that continued from 29 into the, the mid-30s, uh, it took years to get out of that. Right. So I don't think uh, anything uh, Obama does is going to be enough. He's going to be under a microscope. Enjoy the euphoria while you can. Right. We'll play this back at some point in the future, I guarantee you. This is where it's going. All these amazing approval ratings he has and stuff, that's going right out the window when he's in office for a month or two and unemployment is still 9% or whatever it's going to be. Right. All right. Well, thank you, Tom. You have an excellent... Kick me out with the bong hit. Here you go, Ross. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Vincent on the Tom Likas show. Hi Tom, how you doing? Great. 
Hey, uh, I was just kind of curious about well, why the gasoline prices keep going up and the barrel of gas is uh, at $40 a barrel, and you're pretty knowledgeable in that area. Well, you got to read the paper. Uh, OPEC announced it's cutting production. Oh, okay. I remember that, yes. Also here in California specifically, uh, a refinery in Bakersfield, once owned by the Shell Oil Company, has shut down. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. That's right. So, I'll, pretty simple. I'll, I'll take it. I There's just, no, no big conspiracy. That's how it happened. I just came back from Phoenix, and it was a dollar forty-five a gallon there in Phoenix, and compared to here, and and I just think amazing how different the price is, and I just I well, just also here in California, we have a special winter brew of gasoline that includes ethanol and other things, yeah, uh, and uh, th that costs more. Okay, sir. Hey, can you blow me up? Yes, yes, I can. <laughs> One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Christopher on the Tom Like Show. Hello. Hey Tom, how you doing, Dad? Doing great, son. Good. Um, I just want to know what you feel towards us being in another country, spending ten million dollars a month, and um, here we're spending all this money. What countries? Are, wait, wait, wait. Stop. What countries are we talking about? Oh, sorry, my drill is going. I'm sorry, Tom. Um, I'm talking about like how Bush sends all of our um, people to Iraq, and here we're spending all this money. To go to another country when we can't even spend it in our own. You know what I'm saying? And well, I well, 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 it doesn't matter because uh, uh, George Bush will only be the president until next uh, Tuesday morning. Yeah, and, well, he's a and, criminal. And then he's not the. Well, that's a whole other question, okay? The point is, whatever's been done the last eight years, a lot of that is going to be changed or completely undone. All right, well, let's have faith in Obama. Um, I'm a white guy, but I still have faith in um, whoever is out there. And between you and I, I just don't feel it's right for our government to be able to put people in jail for medical marijuana when there's other things. You I, know. I totally agree with that. But uh, if you will recall, no matter how liberal people say Barack Obama is, I haven't heard him say one word about pot. Yeah, for sure. And how, hey, Tom, how how come we can go to any liquor store and grab a pack of cigarettes or um, you know alcohol or something, and it kills tons of people or there's stabbings all the time? But uh, and our prisons are full of medical marijuana or people that just grow. Why not? Maybe if they could just find a way to tax it and then show, hey, you know what? Rather than putting airplanes and well, the you're, FBI you're preaching to the choir here. I've I've always been pro, not only pro legalization of marijuana. I have always been pro legalization of all drugs, and then uh, let people uh, live through personal responsibility. Y yes, and you know what, Tom? I, I, uh, I thank you for having enough balls to or cojones to be on the radio and to speak what you feel about women, about anything, you know. And um, I'm Chris from Big Bear, and um, I'm just trying to make a statement because people like us need to stand up for our rights because we're just getting walked on. When here, here we're paying for Chevy and stuff to get bailed out, but here they're raising the price on cars. They should at least be saying, hey, here's a discount for people to be able to afford a car or a house if we're going to be helping banks and stuff bail out, you know, rather than right. just try to put someone that's like me, that is not, I have a clean record, not a felon or nothing, and here they're going to put me in a jail cell with some mass murder or some dude that's all tatted up all over his face. I think that's just kind of unfair as well, Any over any drug, you know? Well, I agree and, with you, but what I don't agree with is taking up six minutes of air time. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Thank you for that. I agree with a lot of what you had to say, but it was going on a little long. Let's say hi here to Eduardo on the Tom Likas show. How's it going, Tom? Great. It's hot out here. I'm headed towards Lingua. Hey, well, I had a statement, you know, that I had to say. I was working for for a, a big company, private, though, you know. And, I mean, everybody's getting laid off, though, and they, everybody doesn't have jobs. But my my statement was that everybody that's, that's looking for a job, they say that eventually we're going to have a job within a couple of a weeks. This year coming up, which well, a, wait, 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 everyone's going to have a, a job within a couple of weeks. Yeah, months. You know, next several months coming up. It, it, next it's, couple of it's months. Gonna, next several not, months. Yeah, several months. It's not going to happen. Couple of years. Like it's going to take years, and it's not. It, it doesn't take from one day to the next day. You wake up and you have a degree. I mean, you think about that too. You know, it takes. Oh, well, I'm suggesting fun. everybody who's getting laid off, uh, who uh, wish they got more education, this is a good time to find the address of your local community college and get to school, folks. 
Don't be sitting home smoking weed all day. Get an education, for Christ's sake. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. It's wide open telephones on the Tom Likas Show. Stay right there. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. Likas. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show coming to you from Hollywood. At 1-800-5800-TOM. Oh, I'm very excited now. But we talked uh, earlier this week about the the advertising jingle that everyone's paying attention to right now. There's always one. And uh, sometimes one really stands out. And again, that, that that's good and bad. I mean, I think this is the most effective advertising jingle in... Uh, you know, at least a decade. J- jingles were much bigger, you know, thirty years ago. Uh, they're not used as often as they used to be, and even in the radio business, where we've had jingles over the years, in the last few years, as uh, radio stations have cut budgets, jingles have gone the way to the dodo bird for most radio stations. But uh, this is, in my mind, the most effective advertising jingle out there right now. Five, five dollars. Besides the musical elements of this jingle, I, I, I've got to say that um, we talked years ago. I'm, I'm in the advertising and marketing business, it, although it may seem like I'm in the entertainment business. That's what I do here. And um, we talked years ago about a study that had been done about billboards. They actually studied how many words you can put on a billboard that could be comprehended by the average person driving 60 miles an hour. And they found a precise number, six, six words. One of the most successful billboards of all time was one of the most boring. It said, if you smoke, please try Carlton. And that boosted Carlton's market share a couple of percentage points, which is pretty significant. This is I, this is a good jingle, not only because the music is catchy and it gets into your head and you can't get it out, but also because it has a very simple message. And you can't forget what the message is. Now, you're either interested in what it has to sell or not. But if you are, you're going to remember it all day, every day, probably for years to come. Now, the man who wrote this jingle, his name is Jimmy Harnett, and he's on the phone with us right now. Uh, Jimmy, thanks for coming on with us. Hey, thanks, Tom. Uh, tell us about how this jingle came to be, because lots of people try writing jingles. Lots of music on TV to promote uh, shows, for example, but very few of them get in your head. Um, well, basically, the agency came to us and they said we want a jingle, um, and we want it to be as uh, just about as simple as you can make it. Uh, we have a kind of a dance that the actors are going to be doing, and we need the song to go with the dance, with the hand motions. Um, and they kind of gave, gave us, you know, free reign from there, but kind of the uh, the operating idea was keep it simple. I'm trying to picture this. Did uh, did people from an ad agency come in there and start doing the dance, like the, the putting their hands out for the foot long thing? Do they do that? They well, they just you know they were sitting on the back of the couch in the studio and they said, look, they're going to do this motion with the with the five, and then they're going to show the foot long. And so we have to we have to figure out how to write a, something catchy that's going to go with that and kind of make it the mantra for the ads. Did they do the hula in your office? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know if Jerry Cronin did the hula. I don't think he's going to do that. <laughs> so, from what I re- first of all, you're with a company called Is It Tone Farmer? That's right, in New York. And, and what what do you do there? You you write jingles? We write we well we write uh, music for TV commercials and sound design for TV commercials, and sometimes that is a jingle. Now let's talk a little bit about because uh, I read in uh, I guess it was a story in Slate dot com uh, that uh, although this one is so well known, you actually wrote several. Uh, versions, uh, uh, several different uh, jingles you pitched to them. This was just one of them. That's right. We, you know, in in house here, we have a number of composers, and and we all took a whack at it. And so we probably gave them six or seven tracks to listen to, and um, this mine just came up on top. I mean, there were a lot of great tracks there. So uh, when when they said, okay, let's go with this, uh, then how do you uh, do, do? You guys produce this stuff in house? Do you go out and hire out for musicians? How is it done? Uh, we actually, I played, I played all the instruments, and then I had, uh, 
my producer Christina is the other singer, and and Tiffany sang on it, and Ray, and they're, they're you know a lot of the singers are right, are right here in house. And uh, I even heard a Spanish version of it. That's right. Yep. Who sang that? That is Roman Rojas. Really? Yes. Now, for people who haven't heard it, we have the Spanish version of this. Like people are saying, "Oh my God, I've heard this enough already." No, you haven't. Because you haven't heard that they translated it into Spanish. And what I think is interesting about this, and we'll play it, one of the interesting things about this version of your jingle, it, it illustrates the difficulty that Spanish language artists have translating songs that are hits in English into Spanish. Because there are so many more syllables in Spanish to say the same thing. The phrase five dollar foot long doesn't translate into Spanish, so it sounds kind of like this. Cinco, cinco had to improvise there to kind of whip something up that was for people who don't understand what that says you know and you know, the part that's a little hard to understand if you speak english is it says for a sub of one foot in length and then it, it kind of sounds like a stutter and it's actually saying eat it that's right eat it because we couldn't we couldn't get it catching on in spanish <laughs> <laughs> now um yeah, we, were you aware when you wrote this? Because you do this for a living, and and we work with jingle uh, producers and people who produce other forms of audio production uh, in this business. Um, did you have any idea that you'd written something that would b b turn into all these YouTube videos? I mean, people are crazy for this jingle, and at the same time, many people are are, are begging for mercy. You know, I knew I knew it was a good track, but I had no idea that it was going to you know take off like it did. I mean, my I had my nieces and nephews in California and Chicago calling me and being like, I can't believe you wrote that thing. <laughs> that doesn't sound like a compliment, Jim. Well, they, they said their friends were, half of their friends were loved it, and half of their friends said they, they said it was driving them crazy. Now, uh, <laughs> I was watching, have you seen some of the YouTube videos that people have done? I have, yeah. My favorite is actually the guy who programmed it into Guitar Hero. And and videotaped him himself playing it now in that, Guitar Hero. That one I haven't seen, but I have seen not just children, babies singing this song, and 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 doing the the foot long, uh, the you know, the putting their hands out to show a foot long. Babies, there are children growing up, and this may be the first song they ever sing. You, under, you understand this? <laughs> it's crazy. It is a little crazy. Yes, and and I don't know if I'm imagining this. Is Subway advertising more and in more places? I don't know if it's the success of the five dollar footlongs or your jingle or the combination of the everything in the campaign. But I'm hearing them everywhere now. They are they are doing. Uh, you know, I think that the, the Subway people are pretty happy with it, and I think that it, their business has been doing really well. Um, and you know, they're they're branching out and you know wherever they can really. Now, uh, we, of course, because we're crazy over here, we actually went to the SubwayFreshBuzz.com website. Did you also do the dance remix? I did the dance remix. Yeah, I know. I, I, I should probably do a little more work on that one. Well, here it is. This is the <laughs> dance remix. <laughs> Now, if I walk into a nightclub and a j disc jockey is playing that, I'm going to fall down. <laughs> and I'll bet somebody is. It's the thing about it. And again, I for, first of all, I'm in the advertising business, and and so when I see a commercial that's going to break out, it's going to be big. Generally, it doesn't take me long to figure it out. I heard this song last year sometime, and I said, "Oh my God, that's going to be big. This is going to be a very big deal." Um, but but I, I what is the, the there has to be some formula some way to write a song that goes beyond uh, singing the name of a radio station or singing the name of a product that that it gets into your mind and stays lodged there is there a method to doing that I think you know I think the beauty in that piece is that it's just really simple I mean honestly the part I sing I'm the the first singer I sing one note for the first twenty seconds of the song. I'm singing one note. 
And now the other the other singers they harmonize around me, but I'm I'm literally singing one note until it goes to it's k- k- catching on. Wow. Yeah. So, <laughs> I, I mean, I, I don't understand. Like, there are certain jingles. Here's another one you you are probably aware of, um, and and I don't think it's as good as your jingle, but it, it's another one that gets in, embedded in your head. Is that one for Empire Today? I don't know if I know that. Uh, it is, it is five eight eight two three hundred. Oh yeah yeah yeah. No, that's 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 brilliant. <laughs> Do you know that Pearl Jam performs that sometimes in concert? <laughs> I wonder if they do it justice. <laughs> now, what kind of... I saw the piece in Slate, and there you were uh, featured prominently in there. Um, have you gotten other attention from other uh, media outlets and what have you? Have you have you ever performed this uh, production live? I've never... I haven't pre- performed it live. It would be kind of fun to put a band together to do it. Um, I, I've done a couple of other interviews, mostly in print. I just did one for EarFarm.com uh, online, which is like a hipster Brooklyn music site um and a couple of the newspapers did some some interviews wow uh i boy i would love to see that i would love to see you do it live it'll be fun I, i'm telling you i'd come to new york just to see it i don't think i can do the uh, dance remix live <laughs> okay can you hula that i don't know <laughs> it's, it's a little too techno i think Anyway, Jimmy, it's been great having you on, and uh, uh, best of luck to you. Now, do you have uh, a follow-up to this? Is uh, is there going to be another leg in this uh, ad campaign, or they're just going to keep hammering I, away at this? I think the Subway guys, are they, they really love this song. I have a feeling that they're probably going to be doing some more work with it, so uh, I would stay tuned and, and see what they come up with next. Wow, fantastic. It's been a pleasure meeting you and talking to you. I really appreciate the time you spent with us. Thanks for having me, Tom. Jimmy Harned, he is with Tone Farmer in New York City. Show our thanks to Jimmy Harnett, the tone farmer, the author, and the lead singer of the five dollar foot long song. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom is our telephone number. Matt on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey Tom. Hey. Um, I got a question for you about a uh, credit card that I got going right now. Um, I got about forty five hundred on it, and I mean I can pay it off. Right now, I have cash to pay it off, but I was just going to ask you, what do you think? Should I just sack up and do it, or should I just pay half this month? No, sack up and do it. Uh, Where where are you keeping that money now, the cash you have? It's just in the bank. Right. What's the interest rate at your bank? My savings account? Yeah. What's your interest rate? Like a half percent. Right, half a percent. What's the interest rate on your credit card? Um, It's... I think it's like right around nine. So you're paying eight and a half percentage points. For what purpose? I don't know. I guess I just don't want to like give away my cash, I guess. but I don't If know. you need cash, go to the bank and take out another cash advance when you need it. Right. It doesn't make any sense to have money sitting in the bank making one half of one percent so that you can have a credit card debt of $4,500 at nine percent. All right. Don't make any sense. This is why banks, before they start doing all the crazy things they do, this is why banks were such a good business. Because they've 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 gotten so many people like you uh, afraid uh, that you know you use your credit card, you 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 run it up to a certain amount, and, and it, people keep cash in the bank. Well, I, what if I get sick? I might need cash. They never think to themselves, look, if I need cash, I take my credit card, take out a cash advance if I don't have money. Yeah, so I just got to get, I just got to pay it off. Now, let me ask you another question, Matt. How come you don't have money in an account like an FU fund, as I've been describing on the air? I don't know. I just <laughs> Because you like to waste money on stupid crap that you can't afford. That's why you have $4,500 in credit card debt. Right? 
Oh no! I mean, I could afford it. I just chose to use the credit card because I didn't want to. Spend well, my cash. It, the point is, if you don't have money in the bank, like like an emergency fund, you yeah. can't afford that. That is a necessity, and you cannot afford to buy the things you are buying on the credit card. Yeah. Now, the All first right. thing you have to do after you eliminate your debts is to build up an emergency fund. We're in an emergency now. Yeah, I have. I have that too. So. You know, how much do you have? I got about like twenty five grand in the bank. Well, I don't know how much are your monthly expenses? Probably about anywhere from like two to three two to three grand. How much do you pay in rent? Um not that much. <laughs> how much is not that much? Like three three hundred, three, four hundred bucks. What do you live with your mom? No, I live at I live at home, my parents. That's what I just said. Your mom is a parent, right? My mom and my dad, yeah. That's what I said. So you're living at home with your parents. Yeah. You're 32, Matt. Hey, zero tolerance policy, pal. Yeah! You cannot use the S word on the air. You can't do it. Jesus. 1-800-5800-TOM. It's Rob on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Yo, Tom. Rob. How are you, buddy? Great. Hey, I just wanted to tell you how much I agree about the subway jingle. It's a pretty amazing piece of work. It really is. People aren't really using jingles right now. But I tell you what, I was in a rival company, Quiznos, just the other day. They've got the same deal, and I had no idea. Right. They've got the same deal. So it's brilliant. The guy's brilliant. I mean, well, and, and, and by the way, oh, although he did a brilliant job on the song, you have to give the ad agency credit as well, because it was their idea to get a jingle. It was their idea to repeat the same message. Like an automaton over and over and over. Uh, there's a very interesting story about this uh, ad campaign in uh, on the website Slate. If you've ever been there, Slate is kind of like uh, Slate is a magazine like the New Republic or National Review or you know it's a, oh, sure, sure, sure. they yeah, write yeah. all kinds of uh, of thought pieces in there by intelligent people. Uh, at one time, Michael Kinsley was the uh, publisher of it. Uh, and uh, if you go there, you can read a very interesting piece. Uh, that's how we found Jimmy Harnett was by reading the piece in Slate. Yeah, I tell you what, man, it's brilliant. More companies should use jingles. I tell you what. Well, I, I, by the way, I think one of the reasons this jingle is working so well is because so many other companies have stopped using jingles. Right, exactly. It, it jumps right out of the TV because who's doing jingles anymore? Right, nobody, nobody. So uh, it, 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 now it seems novel. When I was a kid, every company had a jingle. Every product had a jingle. Everything had a jingle. Right. It got old then, though. It got old. But now it's brilliant. And every bad radio station had a jingle. Right. Yeah, you got it. Thanks a lot, Tom. Blow me up. Here you go, Rob. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. This is Brandon on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How are you doing, buddy? I'm doing okay. All right. I got a quick question for you, bro. Um, I was going to bars. You know, I went with my buddies. You know, nothing ever seems to work out. You know, we go out to talk to girls and all that. I've done it by myself. I've listened to you for a long time. And I'm still having problems with that. Is there... You know, what I, I don't know what I'm missing, buddy. Well, it's probably your approach. I mean, when you go to a bar, you have to go to a bar with the notion. I don't know about you. I like going to a bar. I like sitting at the bar. I like watching sports or uh, chatting with the bartender, whoever it is. Yeah. I like spending an evening at the bar. Now, if you go to the bar looking for chicks, I think you have, you know, flop sweat, stink of death. I think they can tell that you're looking. Okay, you need to truly get to enjoy going to a bar. Um, you know, to try some uh, booze you haven't tried before. Have you tried some of the upper-end bourbons that are out there right now? Crazy good. Crazy stuff. Um, I like going to a bar and sitting down, and frankly, sometimes I'm waiting for a buddy to show up, or sometimes I just like to go alone. And when women see you alone, confident, having a good time, and paying no attention to them... They can't stand it. They have to do something about it. And ultimately, they will start coming over to ask you what you're doing. Okay, so don't confront them, you're saying, right? I'm sorry? Don't confront them, right? Don't no. Confront them.
No, because uh, guys are doing that all night long. Guys are pitching game all night long. What's your sign? All that other nonsense. The guys still do that stuff. And and they, they've heard every line before. You have to go in there as someone who does not need a woman, does not need companionship, does not need anyone to talk to you. And you will be surprised. By the way, the reason I found this out was totally by accident. I found out because I like going to bars. And I would go out on a given night, uh, maybe just because I heard that a bar was good or really cool, had a great jukebox, or maybe I was going to meet a buddy and he got there late. And so I was sitting at a bar, drinking, watching a game, talking to the bartender. And I found that women were coming up to me going, what are you doing here? I'm just trying to figure out, you know, cause nothing's working out, man. You know, you know, cause I go up and talk to some, you know, also do my own little thing, you know, just sit at the bar, have a couple of drinks, like you say, talk to the bartender. You know, but still, I don't know. It doesn't seem like it's still happening. And I'm not a bad looking character myself, but, you know, I don't know. Well, uh, again, I, I, my, I'm just guessing because I'm not there watching you perform. Gotcha. But we've got lots of good reports on this, so amp up the confidence level. Maybe you amp up the way you dress a little bit, too. Maybe you amp that up. I usually get confidence about girls about the way I dress. You know, I don't dress, like, too fancy, you know, but, like, you know, I took your advice about getting, like, um, you know, like it looks like a wedding band ring across. You know, I got a nice watch. Yeah. Yeah, um, you might also be going to the wrong places. Uh, where do you go? Uh, you know, um, you know, Fridays, Chili's, um... Well, Friday, Fridays you get Fridays you have to be careful of overdoing it because uh, the the female clientele, as far as I can tell, on TGI Fridays seems to be receptionists. Yeah, uh, the eighteen to twenty five year old receptionists, which is a great crowd to to date, of course, but they might be intimidated. They might think you're you're out of their league. So you may have to ramp it down a little bit when you go to a place like that. Got to run? Good luck. Thanks for the call. Our email address is my name. It's Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. Don't forget, we're here tomorrow, Saturday, 2 to 6 p.m. on 97.1 FM Talk. It's the Tom Likas Show.